can you be considered one of the world's best short story writers is if all you wrote was two short stories uh, i mean if you did it once no but lightning strike twice i think so <laughs> welcome to the codex cantina where i am una and i am bitter crypto but not really <laughs> today we are covering sweetness by tony morrison if you are down for a conversational approach to literature, we take some of the most important stories and cover them here. Hit that subscribe button to join us on the journey. And as always, we start off publication information. Sweetness was published in The New Yorker in the February 9th, 2015 issue. And we'll leave a link down in the description below where you can listen and read for free. Now, this is a first person narration story. But what's interesting about this is how Morrison has masterfully written this across the tapestry of U.S. history where we are touching upon modern times, but also going back into the era of segregation as well, onto the cusp of integration and so forth. And the way that Morrison explores the idea of colorism, or sometimes called shadism, you know, how, how much pigmentation your skin is, how black are you, is what is really at the core of what sweetness explores. The first thing that struck me was that we instantly have a great teachable moment of an irony as the story is called Sweetness, but our main character, Sweetness, is a very bitter individual, as we're going to see throughout this story. So we are going to go through a quick plot summary to make sure we're all on the same page and then talk through a little bit of this with a discussion analysis at the end. So for plot, a lighter-skinned black woman gives birth to a darker-skinned child. When the mother sees how dark her child is, she becomes afraid. The mother thinks about all the hard moments her family members with darker skin have had. Her grandmother had passed and eventually didn't even acknowledge her black family members. And then her mother suffered through integration as she chose not to pass. Sweetness addresses us as readers, saying that blacks have to accept the lighter-skinned approaches to passing to save dignity. In the present, Sweetness feels guilt for considering getting rid or even killing her child. They raise the child, however, on bottle, but eventually arguments begin over how black their child was and whether it truly was her husband's child. Eventually, her and her husband split, and Sweetness finds herself raising the child as a single parent. Now, she leaves the child behind occasionally out of convenience to make sure that people didn't see how black her child was. And eventually scores a landlord that charges her just a little bit more rent than what was posted, but accepts it for an easier life. Now she tells Lulu Ann to call her sweetness as she gets older, instead of mother as it's safer. And eventually, Louis, her ex-husband, begins sending them money after he left, even though he didn't have to. And as sweetness gets a night job, they eventually get off of welfare. Sweetness feels bad about how she was very mean to Lulu Ann as growing up, but she justifies it that she needed to, to teach Lulu Ann how tough the world would be on her for having her darker skin. She even trains Lulu Ann to cross the street to avoid passing white boys. As she grows up, however, Lulu Ann becomes proud of her black skin, and even begins to accentuate it by wearing very white clothes. Eventually, they lose contact as Lulu Ann moves away but she still occasionally sends Sweetness money. Years later, Sweetness is older and is in a very homey but comfortable nursing home. She's developed a bone disease of sorts. However, she likes the kindness the working staff shows her. Sweetness tells us how she'll soon be a grandmother, and she wonders how black Lulu Ann's husband may be, but knows that the child's experience will be much different than hers because the world has changed drastically. However, the letters that she has received from Lulu Ann have no return address, and Sweetness recalls how her daughter has grown up strong and even has a career. End plot. Let's move into discussion and analysis. It's worth adding in the end that the tonal shift is that bitterness of sweetness. She's like, and I hope that my daughter has all the struggles I did raising a daughter that may or may not look like her. So let's talk about colorism and blame, because this opening line, what a hook, it's not my fault, period. And when you hear the word fault, you're immediately thinking, well, somebody did something wrong. There's someone at blame here. Somebody did something they weren't supposed to do. But you read a couple more paragraphs in, pages, lines in, and you realize 
sweetness is saying fault is that her daughter has a darker skin. And that's what's at fault, as if it's wrong to be black. Morrison is a genius here at the beginning of the story by already putting us in a, a corner and saying, oh, do I like this character? What do you mean it's not your fault? Like, it, 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 your fault that your kid has a specific skin, skin color? Does that even matter? And why should it matter to you? She paints such a wonderful story when it comes to colorism because you have her grandmother who passed, right? And you have her mother who accepts her blackness and in the middle of, of segregation too. Now, not everybody watching this video might be from America or have the same knowledge of American history. What's the quick overview, Crypto My History teacher, of what do we mean when we say segregation and what do we mean when we say passing? Uh, you can't make me do this quick, but the, the short short of it is that post-Civil War in American history, there's a time period late 19th century, early 20th century, where there is segregation or separation of the races, and everything in life is separated. Different bathrooms, drinking fountains, schools, churches, restaurants, everything is separated out by race. And then even with inside of the African American culture, there is divisions of their races based on the pigmentation or the darkness of your skin and over time eventually have laws that will do away with this where segregation is illegal and we try to put everybody back together again but in that time period there were people that were so light-skinned they could pass or pretend to not be black to have maybe afforded them some of the luxuries in life or some of the negative or not have some of the negative consequences of you know suffering through the Jim Crow laws or these laws that are keeping the black people of the South oppressed post-Civil War, pre-Civil Rights Movement. So as Crypto brings this up, we have the grandmother who rejects her blackness, who, who passes, right? So she's, she's looking for those opportunities that she would be denied if people knew that she was black. And then the opposite, her foil almost, is, is Sweetness's mother, who instead embraces being black, marries black. And when she goes to be married, we have Morrison just coming up with this brilliant little comparison here, where when they get married, she has to put her hand on the Bible reserved for black people. She's not allowed to use the white Bible. She has to use the black Bible. And we have that wonderful commentary where she talks about, but my mother was a caretaker. She would just go cook their food and bathe them like her with her own hands, but she's not allowed to touch the same Bible. And I think this really highlights some of the laziness of of the the racism at the time because it was it wasn't even about um, superiority. It, it was it was about control. It was about power and about how they didn't want to give up their power and could take advantage of others. And this is such a wonderful literary exploration about that. There's two things there. One, definitely the control. Post-Civil War, the Southern farmers have lost their land, which meant everything to them. That was your status symbol. And they're trying to keep control over the black communities because that allows them to continue making the massive amount of money that they were even though they're not allowed to have slaves anymore. And the second thing is, I really think, in my opinion, it's Sweetness's view of her grandmother that she's abandoning her black culture when really, I mean, maybe she is, but she's doing it for the benefit of her family, saying, hey, if we do this, we can have a better life. And isn't that what a lot of times what mothers want for their children? And we see the opposite kind of in Sweetness, and we're led down this path of kind of disliking her for that. And it... And the backstory to this is is that road, that road of progression, right? Because we have the integration era, right, where we're told that you must be separate. But then we even explore it in a little bit more of a modern era where Sweetness is looking between, you know, apartments. And her landlord charges her just a little bit more probably because of her skin color, right? And they talk about how it became illegal to deny people, you know, property because of their race, religion, that sort of thing. But they still did it anyway. It was still impossible to prove. You can change the laws, but that doesn't change the hearts of people either. And the way Morrison explores it from a generational struggle, like things have gotten better, but that doesn't mean things are equal. 
right? Oh, for sure. And we see this all the way up into the mid 90s in not just the South, but in many parts across the country where people would charge more or not allow certain ethnicities and races to be tenants in their houses or apartment buildings. Right. And you can come up with whatever excuse you want, but it's a lot harder to prove, right? So let's move into kind of, I think, some of more of the character moments, too, because because Morrison is just such a brilliant writer. When Sweetness admits to herself, to us, the reader, that she was willing and cons- well, considering, I should say, smothering or even getting rid of her child as opposed to embracing it was so heart-wrenching. And, and it, it literally just was a gut punch to you as you read it. Not only because is it heartbreaking, I think, from a character level, but also I think even on a literary level, it is also a punch to the face because this is the same story that that Sweetness's grandmother and mother were going through. Do I accept my blackness? Do I hide it? Do I embarrass it? Am I embarrassed by it? And Sweetness is telling us she was so embarrassed and so fearful. I guess, of what her daughter would have to go through seeing some of those struggles. She'd rather bury or even kill the blackness that she created. Her her blackness heritage she wanted to hide and push down is what was happening at a literary level. And it's just the one-two punch that is just so hard to read. For me, this is the crux of the story. For me, this is the point of why Toni Morrison wrote this. When I initially read that, I was so mad I was I was I was heartbroken that somebody would want to kill their child over something so silly as their skin color and I was mad at sweetness and then I thought about it and I contemplated why would she do that it's because what society has made her believe what is beautiful or what is good or right or better than based on something so simple as the amount of pigmentation in your skin and then I got angry and I think that's the point that Morrison is trying to make here is that you shouldn't have to ever make that decision of what society is putting on these standard norms and that our country needs to change evolve and do away with things as silly as racism right and it's how much suffering does she take on personally right does she accept some of the lighter skin pluses that she can take advantage of such as getting the apartment and maybe just paying a little bit more than others. You know, we have that quote, I may have done some hurtful things to my only child because I had to protect her. Had to. All because of skin privileges. And I think you have those lines where she talks about how, you know, the black individuals did it to not necessarily hide their heritage because, like, they were embarrassed of it, but because they had to save dignity because they would be elbowed, they'd be spit upon, they'd be denied privileges because of this so they had to in order to like almost like accept this this role that society was putting on them you know i think um the du bois would always talk about double consciousness they would almost have to kind of like pretend that in order to save face to have a somewhat easier of a life was to ex- accept society's punishments And I think that we see that in a lot of the civil rights movement leaders, right? When we see Dr. King and Malcolm X and all these other famous people, she, I I feel like Morrison is reverting back to their idea of that this shouldn't matter. Why does it? How can we move past it? And if you're going to continue using it on both sides of the story, then we're never going to get past it. You, You have to give up this idea that it matters within the group and without the group as well. So in the end... Right, we have Sweetness' his daughter is getting ready to have a baby. And we see excitement. Maybe some excitement that she never had herself, right? Maybe maybe some of that excitement was robbed from her when she saw how darker skinned her child was, which is which is quite sad. So we have a different view from Sweetness now. And we have these moments where I think to me it's probably important of note that the daughter, when she wrote to her mother, didn't have a return address. How did you interpret that? A breaking of a relationship, for sure, that I think that that the daughter, I feel like Lula Ann is saying, I have grown past you, and I no longer need you, and I am confident and strong in who I am, and she moves as far away as she possibly can, and doesn't want her mother in her life, because she might feel like she's a little bit toxic, which is sad, because I think the mother ultimately did want the best for her, 
until the very end, and we realize that she still is a, a very bitter person, and not necessarily her fault. Right. There's that societal influence, right? And you have that quote from her where she says, I know I did the best for her under the circumstances, which I think goes to your point earlier of just like, I know this isn't right, but this is what's going to make it easier. And I think that's what just makes it so difficult because how can we ever expect true change if we don't change what society's pressures is being put upon her and people in her situation? It's, it's absolutely heartbreaking and it's so, it's a, it's a fictional story, right? But they're non-fictional problems. These are problems we have still today and are struggling with and are hoping to improve. And we've come along. But are, are we at a point where we can stop and, and say that this is good enough? We aren't at a point where I think we're, that we're equal. And I think that's what's so beautiful when we read these stories is maybe you don't see it day to day, but some people do. And that's the problem is we need to get to a point where people aren't suffering because of what they're born as and instead have people choose who they want to be instead of what society tells them they're worth. It would be nice to get to a point, and I think that's what a lot of these authors are trying to portray, is that besides being physically attracted to somebody, that something like colorism will become irrelevant. And we think about that a lot of times, like, why is it still relevant to some people? A, a little bit of a history lesson here. Remember, a lot of people that are of African heritage, they can't trace back very far their heritage because when slaves were brought over, they didn't learn anything about them. And so a lot of people can't trace back 15 or 20 generations. I have a friend that can trace his generation back 15 like grandfathers into England. That's nuts. And so I know when people that can go that far back and when you can't, it, 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 it leaves something empty inside of you. But if we can move past that and just say, it doesn't matter anymore. Yes, this is your heritage. But where is your future lie for this country and for us as a peoples? And that your pigmentation shouldn't matter. I think that's what maybe Morrison was trying to say here. I, I just, it's so unfortunate that one of the greatest short story writers of, of all time only wrote two short stories for us. <laughs> yeah, we're done, uh, right? <laughs> well, we're, we're going to be doing some of her novels because she's just such an amazing writer. We'll, we'll leave a playlist down below for more Morrison talks as they happen. And you can check out, of course, our other short story talk from her. Let's move into our wrap up and ratings. Again, this is just going to be a purely subjective. It's not meant to be a uh, an overall quality rating of the story. It's just how did it impact us and and, and where did it, it, it hit us personally? Crypto, what are you going to give this one? Oh, easy 9.5. This one is so relevant for today. And I think it's such an easy story to use as a teaching tool um, for somebody that may not understand what it's like to be on the other side, but understands what it means to love, could understand what it means to be um, a child, could understand what it means to be a mother or to have a rocky relationship with their parents, even take all of the, the racial stuff and colorism and all that out of it. You can still f feel a lot of this story and then add in that other elements and you're like, ah, I got it. Uh, there, there's just so much here to digest and uh, I wish that we had more but uh, I think that if these are the, you know, if this is one of the major contributions to literature and trying to make the world a better place, there is no better place than to start with a story like this. Yeah. Easy 10 out of 10 for me, which puts her at two perfect 10 stories. Clearly one of the greatest writers that has ever lived. You guys got to check this out if you haven't already. And, you know, join us on the novels in the future. If there's a particular Toni Morrison novel that you would love to see us check out or would recommend that you think we would enjoy, hit us up with that, you know, recommendation in the comments down below. So with that said, guys, we post videos every Monday and Thursday. and would love to have you along in the discussion and on the journey. Hit that subscribe button to join us. Una out. Peace.